so we continue the discussion where we have stopped last for the last time so last time we were discussing how we can in general we have noted down that what is system system is nothing but the manner in which the output is obtained by a weighted sum of current and past inputs it can be past few inputs then it is very simple but if it is past all inputs then it is an infinite long sum and to implement infinite long sum well, it is impossible as we proceed because it takes longer time to compute so we were talking about whether the infinite long sum can be expressed as a finite sum using iteration so converting an infinite sum into a finite recursive sum or vice versa can be done we did the first thing that is converting infinite into finite now we are converting finite iterative sum into infinite sum and that is the infinite sum which we got this but here the problem is that the summation was 0 when k equal to 0 to infinity a to k by 2 x of n minus k k e1 so when it is writing such k e1 here doesn't suit the purpose so what we can do is uh, can we make it a generic expression which should be true for every k so in that case what we can do is if there is a very simple uh, what we can say expression using minus 1 raised to n or minus 1 raised to k so if we can have 1 plus minus 1 raised to k if you have got 1 plus minus 1 raised to k if k is e1 this expression becomes 2 and if, if k is odd this expression becomes 0 so this is for e1 k even k and this is for odd k so in general in this summation below the summation sign uh, there should not be any condition so what we want ultimately is this something should not be there so can we make it some changes like this so y is equal to instead of this that is this one xn plus a xn minus so what should happen is that the term should disappear so somehow if we write like this 1 plus minus 1 raised to k then you will again say is it permitted? yes it is permitted this we can separate also k equal to 0 to infinity then a raised to k x of n minus k and overall there will be half because it comes twice so we can verify this so whether you tell me whether this expression matches with this answer so what will happen if k is 0 if k is 0 in that case this will become 1 plus 1 that is 2 and this half that is 1 a raised to k that is a is k is 0 so 1 so it is k is 0 so for k equal to 0 it will k equal to 0 for k equal to 1 what happen when k is equal to 1 this becomes 0 so whole becomes for k equal to 1 term disappears no term for k equal to 2 we will find that it is this term when k is equal to this again 2 half is 1 then only small problem is there it is a raised to k where k is 2 so you can have this as a by 2 is it alright? a by 2 is not alright a raised to or we can write it as root a root a raised to k right so this is the correct expression so for k equal to 0 it is xn for k equal to 1 term disappears for k equal to 2 it is this is 2 this is half the product is 1 root a raised to 2 root a raised to 2 root a raised to 2 
is a. So this is a. For k equal to three, term disappears as this is zero. For k equal to four, root a raised to four is a square. So this term, this is the finite recursive term. Finite recursive sum is converted to an infinite sum like this. So then you will say uh, again it is having the terms, but it's no problem. One. So this you can separate also half into bracket summation k equal to zero to infinity. One term you can have root a raised to k. x of n minus k plus half summation minus root this you can say plus root a minus root a with minus one raised to k x of n minus k so this is why so I both expressions are all right. So in general, what we concluded is that we can convert any expression which is a finite term recursive expression into an infinite term non-recursive expression into an infinite term non-recursive expression. So, what is H K here? What is H K? This is H K. So. Ultimately, we need to convert it into this form. So, what we want is this one. Finally, it must be expressed as H k x of n minus k k equal to zero to infinity. That's all. So, nothing should be there. So, y n should be equal. So, H k is this one half. H where H K this you can say that all this you can include half can take inside so this half can take inside half one plus so whole this will be H K where H K is an expression of K is half into bracket one plus minus one raised to K So this finite term recursive expression is converted into an infinite term non-recursive expression, where H k is the transfer function, where H k is the transfer function of the system. So in general, I again repeat that for discrete time systems, the things are so simple that input is a sequence, system is a sequence, and output is also a sequence. So the entire discussion for major part of this subject and in this next semester for digital signal processing, everything is nothing but appropriate study and analysis of these sequences. So it becomes somewhat simpler. What I repeat is that uh, the reason for beginning with the discrete things is somewhat easier. It doesn't mean that uh, continuous things should be skipped, but it is better that we should start with some easy things so that some interest is created among the students about the subject. So now if, so if you go through the syllabus, then there are many standard things with which some definitions and all these things are there for, we will define them one by one. So xn, hn you can write no problem and yn, only thing is that while writing an expression where we 
we use, we are required to use both index both indexes we it is hk but if you want so if you want don't want to be in a confused state then you can say that yes sequence is hk so inputs what is important is input sequence system sequence and output sequence input sequence system sequence and output sequence and this what we write is called as convolution equation or convolution sum k equal to 0 to infinity h of k x of n minus k this is convolution sum this is convolution sum so how we carry out convolution we write hn one sequence we write xn so suppose if h i write n equal to 0 here so if hn is 2 3 1 and xn is now 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and so on. Now, <coughs> how to carry out convolution? How to carry out convolution? There is a very simple process. I don't, I would not like to spend time on repeating simple things. What is, so yn is convolution. This is called as convolution, convol. Compute the things are very simple. This can be infinite. Then. So you just flip around this, take mirror image around 0. So 2, 3, and 1. 2, 3, and 1. This is the simple way of explaining this convolution. Then one sequence xn, flip the sequence hn, you multiply point by point. So here multiplication is six, uh, 8. Here there is no multiple. So what is that? What has happened now? This is starting point 0. So what has happened? Xs are 0 before 0. And in the flip sequence, all samples will be 0 here and 0 on this side. So because it is 0, 0, 0 and 0 onwards. So Hn is a three-point sequence. Hn is a three-point sequence which is having only non-zero terms for H0, H1, H2. H0, H1, H2 are the only non-zero terms. When you flip it, this 2, 3, 1 becomes 2, 3, 1 and then Xn we write as it is, is a flip sequence. So to compute X0, to compute, so to compute Y0, what we do? We perform sample to sample multiplication of these sequences. We perform sample to sample multiplication of Xn and flip the sequence Hn. So only one point is there that is 8. Y0 is 8. Why? Because in other points one of them is 0. Either Xn is 0 or flip Hn is 0. So Y0 is 8. Then what do we do? Then to compute y1, we shift this, we shift this one location ahead. 2, 3, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So when we compute, so y is it? y is in an 8 only. So here what we get? 3 into 4, 12. 2 into 5, 10. So 12 plus 10, so if this is equal to 8. Plus 10, 22. Then to compute y2, what do we do? We shift it once more. So when you shift it once more, it becomes 2, 3, 1, 0, 0, 0. So in that case, this is 4 plus 15 plus 12. That is equal to 28. So like that. You can go on. So this is convolution of one sequence Hn, other sequence Xn. So now what is the scenario? 
Here HN is three term, three point sequence, and X is a continuous sequence now going till infinity. Suppose if X n is also a finite sequence. If X n is also a finite sequence, then suppose if H n is equal to one two three. And x n is equal to two three four. Then what will happen? Compute y, which is convolution of h k x of n minus k equal to zero to infinity. So in that case, what will happen? Again, same thing. You can take on this small change here. What will happen is that this would be again. Repeat. This is some very simple thing. I am just giving one example. It is, I think, middle school scholarship level problem of finding out conversion of sequences. So. X n that is two three four H n is one two three. You flip it, so flip is one two three, and then you get product flip one. So two into one is so one. That is y zero. So y one. What do you shift it here? One, two, three. Product is this into this. Four. One and the answer is one. No, there is no point. Other. See, for compute y zero, what we do? X n we take as it is. H n we mirror image and multiply point by point. So two into one. In other cases, there is no multiple point. This is zero, and here this is zero. So two into one. Uh, I'm sorry, this term is two. So answer is two. Now we shift H n by one more. So this is X n. This is H n. X n H n. Mirror image H n. Shifted H n. So mirror image H n. We get y zero term. Shifted H n by one. We get one into two. Sorry, two into two, four. Three into one, three. It is seven. Other term zero. For y two. We shift it once more. So when we shift it once more, it becomes one, two, three. So it is three into two, six plus two into three, six plus one into four, sixteen. Now I will write it below so that I get some space. Now I shift it once more, so it becomes three, two, one. So in that case, this is not there because this is zero. Three into three nine plus four into two that is nine plus eight that is seventy. And then once more shift three, two, one. So no other terms, only three. That is this is y three and y four is equal to only one term, four into Four into three. That is twelve. Twelve. So the answer of y is answer of y is two seven sixteen seventeen twelve. Y is two seven sixteen seventeen and twelve. So if there are three points in one sequence, three in other sequence, the number of points in convolved sequence are three plus three minus one, that is five. So in general, if I have one n point sequence, other n point sequence, the sum of convolved sequence, sum of uh, sum uh, the the number of points in convolved sequence are m plus n minus one, m plus n minus one. So this is convolution where the output is out. I again repeat because this is the crux of this entire subject. An input sequence is coming, 
output sequence generated by the system is convolution of input sequence with system sequence. I again repeat, convolution of input sequence with system sequence. What is system sequence? System sequence is the sequence which is there for a given system. That what that system sequence tells? System sequence tells the contribution or proportion of the input received k samples ago in determining the current output. In the proportion with which the input received k samples ago is contributing in current output. So what is sequence hn123 means? Sequence one two three means the current input is taken with weight 1, previous, just previous input sample is taken with weight 2 and previous to previous input sample is taken with weight 3. Current is taken with, current is taken with weight 1, previous is taken with weight 2, previous to previous is taken with weight 3. This is the, so system sequence is nothing but the weights of the inputs received k samples ago. I hope uh, the idea is somewhat clear. So based on if you know the system sequence, if you know the input sequence, you can find the output sequence. Is it clear now? So in general So I will try my level best to make the things quite clear and familiar to you in a common sense, with a common sense approach. What is important in any kind of, uh, what we can say, elaboration is, for it, it should be understood in a, with a common sense manner. It is very possible that you can make it highly complex things, you can make it highly complex things, but that should not be an appropriate approach. The perfect approach should be just make it quite simple. So I again repeat an input sequence, an output sequence and a system sequence. Input sequence, output sequence and a system sequence. So with these three, if you know the input sequence and system sequence, you can find the output sequence. Now, I would like to ask an alternate. Is it clear? So if I give you what is xn? If I give you what is hn, remember that now there should not be jumbling between k and n. So in general it is an index. Only thing is that when two indexes come together to differentiate between them, we have to use other index. So otherwise input sequence, system sequence, output sequence. So if you know the input sequence, if you know the system sequence, you can find output sequence. Now my question is that suppose if uh, I give you a circuit, circuit is given to you so you can understand that circuit. If I apply input, if you know the circuit, I tell you the input, then based on your understanding of the circuit and knowing the input, you can compute the output, right? So if I give you a circuit, if I give you V in T, you can find V in T, circuit V means given circuit, given input you can find the output. Now there is some kind of alternative ways with which the knowledge is tested. Suppose if what I do is this circuit I don't you are having exponent chassis, you connect and you get the output. Now what I do, in the exponent chassis, the circuit which is there, I will mask. You are not able to see the 
components of the circuit. Input is given and you will observe the output. Is the question clear? Given the circuit, given the input, you can compute the output. Now, if I give you the circuit, I mask the circuit, you are unable to see the components. I give input terminal, output terminal. You can give the input, you can get the output. So, the question is now, based on input you can observe, output also you can observe. Earlier what was the situation? Input, this circuit was given to you, it was components were shown to you, how they are arranged. Input was told, so you were able to compute what output it will give. Ekadya circuit la, ekadya input la, the output kai in kadu shakta. Ata kai kele, circuit dile pande jakun ke ule. The input dile aitza, output baga aitza, circuit kai aitza, kai aitza. Just some kind of asking the problem, some twisting. So if xn is given, yn is given. If xn is given, yn is given, the answer is yn is equal to summation k equal to 0 to infinity hk x of n minus k x of n minus k now system is equation is hidden from you you means there is a computer program but the computer program is not available to you so it's an exe file. Somebody has written some program, there's an exe file. That computer program is not available to you. You cannot check the computer program, but you can run the computer program. When the exe file is there, you can run the computer program. You are un unable to check, but you can run it. So you can give input, you can observe output. Then what I want, if xn is given, xn is means you are liber at liberty you can choose xn you can observe means you know xn you know yn so you know x xn you know yn compute hk so from input sequence and system sequence we were computing output sequence now the task is input sequence is told to you output sequence is told to you based on these two you have to find system sequence or you can choose an input sequence. You can choose an input sequence. You can observe output sequence. You should tell what is system sequence. Achha dalga. HK dila input dila. Manje system sequence maitha input sequence maitha output sequence karta hai to. Ata system sequence maith nahi hai. Tumi input sequence tumi hawa dhu shakta output observe ko shakta. You should be able to tell what is the system sequence. You can choose any input which is convenient to you. Think something and tell me what is HK. You can take a break and immediately those who are, have finished can verify, those who have not finished can watch. We will continue immediately after some time.